Amen. 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 Get your Bibles on this morning. Get your Bibles on this morning. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. We're going to go to the word of the Lord on this morning. Get your Bibles. I have a little something, something I want to share with you on today. We've been preaching from the series of messages called God Ain't Playing. God Ain't Playing. Thank you for all your, your emails, your Facebook inboxes and different things I've been receiving um, that the series has been a blessing to you. I appreciate, always appreciate hearing um, from you all to let me know whether or not the word of God is, is um, hitting what it needs to hit. I don't just preach just to preach. Uh, that's a waste of time just to get up and preach just to preach. Um, some people come to me and they say to me after me, say, Pastor, it sounds like you were talking directly to me. And I tell them I was. I, am, okay? I come to preach directly to you. When there's no, no need in preaching if I'm not going to talk to you. And so our series is entitled God Ain't Playing, Understanding the Timeless Truth That God Won't Compromise. Understanding the <clears throat> timeless truth that God won't compromise. We've already talked about four of the eight. By the way, I, have, I don't even know what the eighth one is yet. I still don't know. God's just going to have to give it to me because I can't find it nowhere. But anyway, um, understanding the timeless truth that God won't compromise. We've, been, we've already talked about four of them. We talked about moving mountains. We talked about his son returning. We talked about... Um, he's not playing about your calling. And then the one that we talked about at 11 o'clock on last week that I think I got in a lot of trouble about is forgiving each other. Mm, Jesus. Okay, so we, we talked about those on today. We got eight more to do. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about your money. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to talk to you about your money this morning. God ain't playing about your money. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Beginning at verse number 8, reading down through verse number 10. Actually, we'll read down through verse 12. Malachi chapter 3, beginning at verse number 8, reading down through verse number 12. Hopefully, everyone's doing okay and that we won't have too much turbulence on this flight this morning. Okay. Malachi chapter 3, beginning at verse number 8, reading down through verse number 12. New Living Translation, you know it so well in the King James Version. So let's look at it in the New Living Translation. Malachi 3, verse 8, New Living Translation. And that, when you're ready, please read for me. Hallelujah. Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse. For your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Everybody say amen. amen. Thank God for the reading of his holy word. Again, verse number eight says, which should people cheat God? Yet you've cheated me, but you ask, what do you mean? When do we ever cheat you? You've cheated me of the tithe and the offerings due to me, due to me, due to me. Again, we've been talking about this, the fact that God ain't playing. This morning I want to talk about that as it relates to our money, that, that God is not playing. And, and as I was looking at and studying this, I, I understood that there were a couple of things that I could talk about as it relates to God and what he's not playing about. This message could be about how we cheat God. And we can talk about that God is not playing. He doesn't want to be cheated. And we could talk about that. Or we could talk about how God said that people are under a curse. And when God says we are under a curse, you know, God's not playing about that. But I feel the focus this morning needs to be on the fact that the intentionality of God was not to curse the people, but to bless the people. Okay? The intentionality of God was not to curse the people. But to bless the people. God's goal is never to curse you. Excuse me, I just had a moment for myself there. Thank you, Jesus. God's goal is never to curse you. God's goal is never to hinder you. God's goal is never to disappoint you. And 
to keep you from enjoying the best that life has to offer. That's never has been God's goal. I heard a preacher say on yesterday that somebody has lied on God. And I kind of agree with that because I think some people have really lied on God because they make it as if God is always trying to keep you from things. That God is trying to hit you with some big lightning bolt and try to kill you and destroy you. But, but somebody has lied on God. And if you think God's desire is to curse you, then be prepared to take some of the scriptures out of the Bible. Just simply tear them out. Just simply tear them out. Matter of fact, you begin by tearing out Jeremiah 29 and 11. Where he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you an expected end. Just tear that out. As a matter of fact, while you turn that out, you might as well go to the New Testament and tear out John 10 and 10 where it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. And while you turn that out, you might as well tear out 2 Corinthians 2.14 which says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. See, y'all don't read your Bible. If you think that God is trying to curse you, you are completely lost your mind. God is not trying to curse us, but God is trying to bless us. And by the way, while you turn out those scriptures, certainly you got to turn out 3 John, the second verse where it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thou soul prospereth. God is not in the business of cursing you. Jesus. God is not in the business of cursing you. Au contraire, he's in the business of blocking curses. He's in the business of removing curses. Now, can you admit with me? Because I know I got some people that will admit this with me. Our lives are better because we met Jesus. That he came into our lives. And if the truth be told, what has been going on is that curses are being broken in our lives. We have generational curses that have been stopped because of where we are in Christ Jesus right now. We got curses that have been removed and taken out of our families. Why? Because now we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm not broke because he removed the curse. I'm not sick because he removed the curse. I'm not going through because he removed the curse. I'm not where I used to be because he removed the curse. I'm not in sin because he removed the curse. How dare you try to make me think that he's trying to curse me when everything that he's trying to do that I can see is that he's trying to bless me. So don't let these little deep folk run around here try to make you even think that God is trying to curse you. That God is not trying to get something to you. As a matter of fact, God has your best interests in mind. I don't mind if I talk just a little while, I I just, God has your best, best interest in mind. He has the best interest of the believer in his thoughts. You hear what I said? He has the best interest of believers in his thoughts. And everything he allows and disallows is purpose to get the best out of you and the best into you. Everything that God allows or disallows is purpose to get God's best out of you or to get God's best into you. Everything that's happening in my life is, is for either this fact that God is trying to get something to me that's better than what I already have, or he's trying to get something out of me that, that's better than I, what I've already produced. Whether he's allowing something or disallowing it, it's all for that purpose. And you, when, you, when you begin to understand it like that, you won't trip. When you begin to understand it like that, you won't be pulling your hair out about what things are going on in your life and why things are happening the way that they're happening. They're happening the way that they're happening because God has purpose for certain things to come to you or he's getting something out of you. You got to understand, most of my adversity was meant to bring the best out of me. Most of the things that I encountered and the people that I encountered that I didn't like, the reason why they were there is because God was getting the best out of me that was inside of me that had been smothered by all the people that were liking me. As a matter of fact, I cannot even properly develop until I'm challenged. Oh, my God, I feel like I'm going to preach a little while. So you all might as well just, you know, you know, sit down with me. And, okay, so, so God is, has the best interest in mind. So when God tells Israel he'll, here that you're cheating me and that you're under curse, it's because he has their best interest in mind. God, God doesn't want them to be under a curse. This is not how God envisioned the people living. He, he wanted more for them. He wanted more for them. He wanted 
more for them. He didn't want them under a curse. He didn't want their land not producing crops. He didn't want the, the insects and disease uh, eating away at their increase. God wanted more for them. And I just feel the need in the Holy Spirit to tell six of y'all that God wants more for you. I, I, just, I, I don't know who those six are, but I just feel the need to tell somebody prophetically, as I sense it in the spirit today, that God wants more for you. As a matter of fact, God has intended to stop everything that has come into your life to eat up your increase because God wants more for you. Now, I don't know if I got six people that can receive that, but if you can receive that, just throw your hands up and receive it. God wants more for me. God wants more for me. God wants more for me. Excuse me, maybe I'm preaching to myself this morning. I thought I was preaching to y'all, but God wants more for me. God wants more for me. The conditions that I'm living under right now are not the conditions that God intends for me to be living under. God wants more for me. God wants more for me. I'm even talking to some of y'all folk that think that y'all are real blessed. You ain't even real blessed as of yet. God says, I want more for I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to preach myself here. Uh, uh, but the problem, the problem with the people, because God wanted more for them. Look at somebody say, God wants more for you. Um, but, but their problem was, their problem was, they had a problem. They had a problem, y'all. They had a problem. Their problem was they were, not, were, they were not willing to trust God with their most valued possession, their money, their increase. Can we talk just for one moment here? It's one, of the, it's one of the places where we have the toughest time trusting God. We can trust him with our lives. We can trust him with our families. We can trust him with our jobs. But it seems like we just can't trust him with our money. Okay, I'm, come on. I'm going to be real just here for a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the people that just want to be real. I want to talk to the people that just want to hide. But I want to talk to the people that just want to be real. It can be very difficult to trust God with our money. Huh? Understand that 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 I understand this that your money does not determine your salvation. Somebody should have said amen right there. Your money does not determine your salvation, but absolutely it can determine how much of your heart is into the kingdom. Oh, see, you just never said because I, I know some of y'all got little attitudes while I'm preaching. You say, like, you know, why is he preaching about money? Money don't determine whether or not I'm saved. It absolutely does not determine whether or not you're saved, but it does determine how much of your heart is into the kingdom. Jesus says this in Luke chapter 12, verse num number 34. He says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if your treasure is not into the kingdom, then your heart is not into the kingdom. If your treasure is not into the things of God, then your heart is not into the things of God. It... For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So understand that your money does not determine your salvation, but it absolutely determines how much of your heart is into the kingdom. And there is a thing that I need you to understand anyway, because in trusting God, in trusting God with our money, if we get this mentality, I think it will change things. Listen to me. Listen to me. Your job is not for your living. It is for your giving. I need you to hear what I said. I, don't, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the little claps that I got, but I'm not trying to get you to clap it. I need you to understand this. Your job is not for your living. It is for your giving. Your giving is for your living. No, see, so you missed what I just now said. Your job is not for your living. It's for your giving. Your giving is for your living. See, I give in order to live. Because what I make on my job ain't enough to do what I, what I really need to do. So therefore, God blesses me with my job in order for me to give. And then as I give, God responds to my giving by giving me enough to live. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. The Bible says this, that he gives seed to the sower. 
Those that sow, he gives seed to. If you are not a sower, he does not need to give you any seed. But if you are a sower, he provides a way for you to have seed so that you can sow that seed in order for increase to come into your life. Is anybody here listening to me at all? So your job is not for your living, it's for your giving. God gives me a job so I can give. Thank you for my job so I can give, God. He gives me a job so I can give. And now that I can give, I can live. And understand this. See, see, you got to understand this. Whatever, see, it's not about having a six-figure job. It's not about having a six-figure increase. If you got that, thank God for that. But you see, God is not based upon what, what you wish you had. It's based upon what God blesses you with. And when God blesses you with that increase, whatever the increase is, whether it's on $9 an hour or $29 an hour, I give my tenth on that what God has blessed me with, and then God just blesses my life. I'm not waiting on the windfall to give. I'm giving on where I am now so that the windfall will come. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay, okay, so, so, so the, the, the problem with Israel, apparently, is that they couldn't trust God. They couldn't trust God. God could have turned his back on them, but instead he issues a challenge. Hallelujah. He says, bring your tithe, and I'm going to respond to you bringing your tithe. I'm going to respond to that. Now, I know some of y'all are very uncomfortable with this message because you're like, oh, he's okay. preaching about money. Uh, that's all right. I preach about everything because it's in the Bible. I think you ought to preach about it. <laughs> if you don't like it, it's in the Bible. I'm sorry. I'm just going to preach about it because it's in the Bible. Okay? And he says, and because, because, see, I understand that, that it is a challenge. It is a struggle to be a, a, to be a consistent tither. Somebody ought to say something. Yeah. It's a struggle to be a consistent tither. It's, a, it, it's even a struggle to be a consistent giver. Yeah. Because we have the capacity within us to always go back to giving three dollars or one dollar or fifty cent in the offering. And if I don't check myself, y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I'm talking about me, the pastor of the church. Okay, if I don't check myself and say, boy, what are you doing? Don't you understand that your prosperity, that your blessing, that your future is tied into what you do in your giving? Why in the world would you take your money and hide it from God in your pocket, in your purse, as if God don't know that you have it? Hide it from God and didn't think that God's going to bless your life. Nobody's saying anything to me. Why do we do it? Because we can't trust God with it. We cannot trust that when we give it to God, that God has enough power within himself to take what we give and multiply it and then give us back more than what we gave him. Okay, I'm going to move on. Apparently, they could not trust God. So he says, bring your tithe, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond. See, this is the challenge. Bring your tithe, I'm going to respond. I'm going to start opening up windows of heaven, and I'm going to pour out blessings you can't receive. Did you hear that? He says, if you do this, if you do this, if you bring it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to respond. I'm going to open up the window of heaven and I'm going to pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Do y'all hear that? God ain't playing about this. Some of you haven't tried it. Some of you haven't tapped to into it. Some of you haven't been consistent. God says, listen, if you do it, I'm going to respond to what you do. I'm going to open up. I um I uh oh my God thank you Jesus I, um um I, I had I had um let, let me let me can I talk just a minute to, to you I had um two visual pictures in my mind as I was studying this um the first visual picture that I had in my mind was of New York City um in I think it was 1886 at the dedication of the Statue of Liberty um they were so celebratory of the fact that the Statue of Liberty had been finished. They had an impromptu ticker tape parade, okay? Right through the middle of the city, people began to take all their ticker tape. And some of y'all too young know what ticker tape is. I don't have time to explain it to you. I have to get back with you later. Okay? But they begin to take all this paper. I'll just say paper. And they begin to put it in trash cans. And you know in New York, they have these high skyscrapers. Are y'all listening to me? And they begin to open up the windows. 
Mm -hmm. And they begin to take all that paper and begin to dump all that paper out on the parade as it went by. Are you listening to me at all? In the spirit, in the spirit, I begin to see as God began to say to me that as my people just try me, that I'm about to organize a parade. Mm -hmm. I'm about to order that parade and I'm about to have the angels open up windows of heaven and I'm about to dump out such blessings that there shall not be room enough for them to receive what I am about to do. Could I get somebody that has enough faith to hear that to say thank you Jesus. That's, 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 that's the first visual picture that I have. Okay. Now of course they just now had this same parade. They do it whenever there's something to celebrate. The New York Giants just had the same parade. They, they, they went through the city. And, and one thing that I, I remember Justin Tuck saying, he's one of the football players, he, he simply said this, I'm glad I don't have to clean all this up. You know why? Because what they dumped out of the window was, was more than one man could handle. You caught it. You caught it. You caught it. You caught it. What came out the window was more than just one man could handle. The people who did the cleaning had to have a team of people to get together to, re to, get the re to receive what had been dumped. I'm going to pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough for you to receive it by yourself. And now you're going to have to get some other people to... I wish somebody just throw your hands up and give God a praise real quickly. Just give him a praise. Okay, hold up, hold up. I got to tell you about my second visual. My second visual is not so spiritual as the first vision. My second visual that God showed me, and I just believe this is going to happen in the spirit. Y'all kind of forgive me. Okay, I know y'all don't believe stuff like this. This is what I learned out of. If you don't have, any, if you don't have expectation, you'll never be disappointed. People with no expectation are never disappointed because they're not expecting anything. If you give with no expectation, you will never be disappointed. But when you give with expectation that God's about to do something for you, then God says, hope maketh not a shame. Whatever you can believe me to do with what you give to me, I'm able to do that and beyond that. Are y'all uncomfortable? Are y'all uncomfortable? I am not uncomfortable. Okay, oh yeah, I took my second visual. My second visual I got from Chuck E. Cheese. I got it from Chuck E. Cheese. I told you it wasn't the spiritual at the first. In Chuck E. Cheese, they had this little machine right in the corner of Chuck E. Cheese. They got this little machine that they put the kids in and they put the goggles on the kids. Now, I mean, I'm not even sure what the inside the machine. I think they had tickets or, or, or fake money or something like that. But whatever it is, what they do is they hit a switch and this blower just starts going. Now, as the blower going, whatever it is, whether it's coupons or money, it's just going everywhere. I mean, it's just flying everywhere. Now, it is the personal responsibility that is in the inside of the machine to collect as much as much stuff as he can and, and they begin to reach and scrap and st stuff here and put stuff here because they, they got a time frame that they're working with and they just got to get as much as they can before the clock runs out well you know what I saw in the spirit y'all don't mind if I just get real stupid on y'all do you what I saw in the spirit is that God is about to turn on the switch and there's about to be so much increase that's about to come to the body of Christ that we've got to get ourselves prepared to get everything that God is releasing. Y'all, y'all ain't as crazy as I am. Look at somebody telling you better catch as much as you can. Okay. 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 So, 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 so. So, God, I'm glad I'm saved. This just sets up my life. Some of you don't even understand that salvation has built within it the capacity for your life to be blessed beyond where you've ever been in your life. You don't have to be a drug dealer. You don't have to be a hoochie mama. You don't have to know the right person. All you got to know is Jesus and follow the principles of his word. And it just sets your life Woo! Excuse me. Excuse me. So, so come on now. Come on now. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. So here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. 
Here's what's happening. Let me go back to God here. God says, he says to them, you give your tithe. I ain't playing about this now. You give your tithe. I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. I'm going to pour you out a blessing that shall not be ruined. And let me tell you how serious I am about this. Try me. Test me. Prove me. Let me tell you how serious I am about this. Now, understand this. I thought about this. I thought about this. I said, wait, 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 wait. This is what the New Testament said. You see, Jesus said, you should not even tempt, try the Lord thy God. But when it comes to this, God says, I want you to try me. I ain't playing about this. I want you to try me. I want you to test me. I want you to prove me. If you do it, then I'm going to show you that I am not a man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. Whatever I said, I'm going to bring it. I'm like, God, you mean I can test you? You mean I can test God? Yes. Can I tell you this? Every time you grab one of these envelopes and you start writing, God said they get ready to test me. Last name, Jones. First name, Ernest. I want him to know who's doing the testing. Street address? Absolutely. Because I want him to know where to send it. Oh, they want my phone number too. Absolutely. Just in case somebody need to call me. Are y'all hearing me at all? Bank card, oh, I got one of them too just in case somebody might need to deposit it. You want me to sign my name? Absolutely. Because I want you to know that I'm ready to validate the word of God, that what God said is true is going to happen in my life. Now, when you get in the line, You ought to get in line and say, God, it's testing day. God, I'm coming up here to test you. To see if you're going to do in your word. I already know you're going to do it. But God, you told me to do that. I'm coming up here to test you. Because I'm ready to see some windows get open. Y'all ain't talking to me. Every time you take an envelope and release it. God touches the angels and tell them to open the window. <laughs> Throw your hands up and say, open the window, Lord. Open the window. The key to your bla- Oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay, hold up. All right, all right. I got a couple more things to say. I got to go. I got to go. I'm, I got to go. Okay, I got to go. Because there's something I need you to understand, okay? When you read Malachi... You have to understand that God's blessings are directed toward the, the, the specifics of your life. He says to them, he says to them, let me go back up here and look at it. He says to them, see if I open another window of heaven for you. Then he says this, he says this, King, New Living Translation, so you can really understand it. He says, your, verse 11, your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them with insects from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine. Before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, you got to understand something. That these were agricultural people. They needed agricultural blessings. Are you hearing me? They were agricultural people. They needed agricultural blessings. So God blesses in the specifics of your life. Whatever, they, whatever it is that you need, that's how God blesses you. These people didn't need a blessing to pay $4 for a, for a gallon of gas. Amen. We do. 
Why y'all ain't talking to me? Why you ain't talking to me? Why y'all ain't talking to me? They didn't need, they didn't need money to go to the commissary. We do. Huh? They, they didn't need a car to ride in. Okay? They didn't need no car. They, they had no car. Henry Ford wasn't, wasn't around at that time. But thank God that Henry came before I came. So that the automobile can be invented. And I need a car to get to where I need to get to. Therefore, y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. I need one. God bless it. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me to talk. Y'all ain't ready for me to talk. See, y'all ain't ready for this type of preaching. Y'all, y'all, see, y'all, y'all people, you don't know how to receive the blessings of God. Because you know what I'm ready to do? I'm ready to release some cars up in here, but I can't release them to people that have no expectation. I got some people that ride the van to church. Now, thank God for the van, but I'm believing that God can bless them with a car. Y'all don't want me to preach. You don't want me to preach. God blesses us according to the intended need that we have in our life. Somebody needs a house. God has the... You see, y'all... Look at somebody say, God ain't playing. God ain't playing. Our problem is we've lost faith. But God ain't playing. Our problem is we lost expectation. But God ain't playing. Throw your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. Um, God's going to bless you with needful provisions. Everybody say, needful provisions provisions in other words whatever you need that's what God's going to give you God told him your crops are going to be abundant and your insects are going to be rebuked I don't have no crops and Terminex been taking care of my insects so that God that ain't what I need but Paul anointed by the Holy Ghost talked to the church at Philippi and said my God shall supply your need According to his riches and glory. In other words, whatever your need is, he's got enough supply to meet it. David got anointed and said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, whatever I need comes into my life. Look at somebody say, you got you to gotta get it. You got to get it. You got to get it. It's hard preaching to y'all about this because you don't have an expectation about this. But you got to get this because this is much the word of God as anything else. You got to get it. My expectation says I'm get, I got it. I got it. I got it. God ain't playing. So when you see me giving, it's because I know God ain't playing. I know stuff is coming for my favor. I know stuff is better. I know. I know windows are going up. Huh? I know windows are going up as soon as I get my seed into the ground. Windows are just going up for me. So don't get, don't become no player hater when you see me riding when I'm riding in. When you see me living where I'm living and doing what I'm doing. Don't get all mad and upset when you see me wearing suits from Joseph A. Bank. Don't get all mad and upset when you see the Lord blessing my life, baby. It was when I was giving that God was setting me up. Listen, last thing I want to say. I'm, I'm, I'm just about done. I'm just about, I'm just about done. But God ain't playing about this. He said, listen, I'm going to let you know I ain't playing. Go ahead and try me. Test me. See won't I do it. Put my name on the line. Every time you, every time you give, you put God's name on the line. And one thing about God, he ain't going to allow his name to go down. If his name would go down, then the rest of the word would have to go down. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower when the righteous run into it and are safe. Now, if his name goes down, then I don't have anywhere to run and be safe. He says in his word, you pray in my name. You cast out devils in my name. You do this in my name. Well, if I'm giving and he allows his name to go down, then no devils can be cast out. Then nobody can be changed. Y'all ain't listening to me at all. So when you give, then the name of the Lord is at stake. And God says, I ain't going to let my name go down. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Y'all ain't saying that. I said, are you hearing me? God ain't 
ain't playing about this. He don't want your curse. He don't want you cheating him. God said, I'm trying to get it into your life. I'm getting it into your life. It's a concept you got to keep before you because the devil will always steal it from you. Why do you think, why do you think, let me tell you well, one, of the be, one of the best times the devil shows up in church, when it's time to give, he just shows up. He starts speaking. Why are they asking for all that? We ask all that for all that because you need to be challenged. If you don't, if you don't challenge me, I ain't going to give but so much. But when you challenge me, what you do is you set my life up to be go, yo, beyond where I am. Because here's, here's a revelation. I got a deep revelation. Y'all want to hear my deep revelation? Yeah. Nothing changes when nothing changes. That's a deep revelation. That's my deep revelation. Nothing changes when nothing changes. In other words, nothing's going to change in your life if you just keep doing the same thing that you're doing. No, you, ain't do, you ain't doing nothing, and so ain't, ain't nothing going to change. Okay. Until you start changing, until you start saying, you know what, I believe the word of God. I believe, I believe God says I can try him with my money. Mm-hmm. Y'all got quiet, but that's fine. God says, I believe, uh, God says I can try him with my money. I'm about to try God with my money because I need something to change. I need something to be different. I need something to supernaturally turn around for me. So I'm going to try God with my money. And so what I'm going to do, okay, this don't make no absolute sense. And by the way, most biblical stuff don't make no absolute sense. Some of you try to operate in sense. I believe as Donald Lawrence says, I'm not making sense. I'm making faith. If it makes sense, it is easy to do. But when it's faith, that's when it taps into our intellect. And we have to make up our minds whether or not we're going to trust God or not. Tithing doesn't make any sense. Giving doesn't make any sense. Boy, y'all are looking at me like you want to throw something. It don't make no sense. It don't make sense. But it's a faith act. And when you respond to God in faith, then God responds according to the principles of his word. Oh, Y'all should have came to the 11 o'clock service. <laughs> so God says, listen, I'm, I want you to try me. Sowing is the key to your future. It's tapping into the supernatural provision that God has for your life. And I understand that some of you, you, you might be like, well, you know what? I don't know if it, it's going to work. Well, it ain't going to work until you try it. It's not going to work until you try it. When you try giving, when you try tithing, giving of the 10%, the 10%, you take 10 dimes, you keep nine of them, you give God one little dime, one little dime. That's all God's asking for. I think this is a good deal. He gives you 10 dimes. He says, give me one of those dimes. That's 10%, right? You give me one of those dimes. I take that dime. And I bless your life with more than the nine that you held on to. Yeah. 30, 60, 100 fold blessing. Okay. With more than the nine that you held on to, I bless your life. So all I want is the one dime. One dime in tithing. By the way, look what, look what the scripture says, okay? The scripture says, he doesn't even say, I want to challenge you in your giving. He says, bring your tithe. Oh, y'all don't read your Bible. You don't read your Bible. He said, bring, bring, that, bring the tithe. He said, yeah, you robbed me in, 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 in tithing, in offering, but what I'm going to ask you for is the tithe because the tithe is the hardest thing to bring. Oh, Lord Jesus. It's the hardest thing. So he said, that's what I want to deal with. I want to deal with what you think is the hardest thing to bring, and you bring me that. And I'm going to do something for you beyond where you are. You know what it is? I know it's a test of God, but it's also a test of us. Can he trust us? Can he trust us to be able to handle the more that he's going to bring into our lives? Can he trust us? Because if I can't trust you to bring the one dime on the ten dimes, then how can I trust you to bring the one thousand on the ten thousand? It's the same dime. It's the same dime on the 10 dimes. But now it's become a little bit, it looks like it's more. 
looks like it's more. But it's the same one dime on the ten dimes. Same thing. So if I can't trust you with the one dime on the ten dime, how can I trust you to multiply you and bring more into your life? Don't ever forget. Let me tell you this. Let me tell y'all this. And I need y'all to hear me. I'm about to say something that's going to really wreck the religious people. They're going to get mad at me, okay? But I need to tell y'all this. I need to tell you this. And I especially need to tell some of you younger people that are growing up in church, okay? Because I know the scenario, if you will. I know the scenario. You get old and you go and live somewhere or you go in the military or you do whatever. And sometimes you get a little, you know, you get a little, I ain't going to church anymore, okay? I don't want that to happen. But if it does happen, let me, let me suggest something to you. If you ever stop going to church, still send your tithe. Okay? I'm serious. Listen to me. Don't ever stop tithing. It's a principle that will bless your life and has the capacity to keep you connected enough so that you can get back to where you need to be in God. My preaching is better than the response that I'm getting. It's much better. So God says, I need to, I want you to challenge me. I want you to try me. I want you to see if I don't do for you what my word says I would do for you. Stand with me real quickly. My time is up. God ain't playing about this, okay? God will bless your life as you trust him. Thank you, Jesus. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? Can you believe this? God ain't playing about this. He's not playing about this. That's why, that's why it says try me. Because I'm not, I'm not playing about this. I want you to get somewhere. I want you to get somewhere. Okay, Lord. Father, in your name. Thank you for where you want, want us to get to. And what you want to do with us. Jesus. And Father, we Okay. Um, here's what I hear the Lord saying, and I, I don't really want to say it, but I guess I have to because he keeps saying it. <laughs> uh, don't worry, me and the Lord do this all the time. Don't worry about it. Um, God says, I want my people to trust me. I don't want them just to hear me. I want them to trust me. I want them to trust me. And I hear the Lord saying, if you know that your week was worth at least $200, that's all. He says, if you know that your week, what you did, your life was worth at least $200. God says, I challenge you. To tithe off of that. To tithe off of that. Because I hear the Lord saying, some of you sat there. Okay, God, okay. Some of you sat there and you listened to the message. You was like, woo, I got myself together. I got myself together. I got myself. So he ain't preaching to me. He's preaching to them. God says, you don't understand it. I was preaching to you too. I was preaching to you too. Because I see beyond where you are. Oh. God, thank you, Lord. I see beyond where you are. And I'm about to get you into places, into things, into levels of ministry. Oh, my God. H hold up, hold up. Let me, let me, let me kind of rewind because I hear God so clearly. He says, matter of fact, I'm talking to you tithers. I'm talking to you that have already tithed, that have already given, that feel like you got your financial affairs in order. He says, I wonder if you would be willing to go beyond what you feel to be your obligation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go beyond what you feel to be your obligation and give according to the $200 week. Because Lord, this is a whole lot. <laughs> it really is. Because it, but because the $200 week is a tithe of the type of week that your future holds beyond where you are right now. Which means that 
your weeks will develop into $2,000 weeks. Thank you, Spirit. Your weeks will develop into $2,000 weeks. And thank you, Jesus. Lord, I don't know if they can help this. I really don't. I don't know if they can help this. I don't know. Somebody just stop worshiping. Because I'm not sure if the Lord, if the Lord, if, if, if the Lord really wants me to say what I'm hearing in my spirit. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, Lord have mercy, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Okay, Lord. Okay. Um, so, so let me get back to the originality. That, that, that God says, uh, those of you that are tithers, he says, I want you to respond to a $200 week. Which means that you give $20 on a $200 week. Um, thank you, Jesus. This is so... That you... Uh, Thank you, Jesus. And um, the two hundred dollar week will turn into a two thousand dollar week. The two thousand dollar week has the ability to turn into the twenty thousand dollar week because I'm God. As a matter of fact, I hear the Lord saying, "I'm speeding up the financial process in your life."